Hi, Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist. Uh, welcome to the Conservation Studio. A uh, couple things happening here, uh, building some doors, building a Dutch door, three of them in fact, three different sizes, uh, very Dutch inspired going back to 1670, 1690, maybe 1700. As we can see over here, they really uh, coined or figured on the diamond shape inside with radiating moldings out. Um, so uh, these are almost like two doors in one. In fact, actual fact, this door is upside down. This is the bottom, this is the kick, and that's the top. It's too, it's too heavy to move, or I mean, you can move it, but I tend to rotate it, open the door, but uh, it's fine sitting here. And uh, I did uh, type on uh, waterproof glue. I put some, and all these pieces, when I apply them, they're just tack nailed with galvanized, and I'm gonna come over and put the, uh, the through nails and paint them. So, uh, you know, these guys here, fairly sizable, they're very malleable type nails, and they're gonna, they're gonna end up being peened on the other side. And, and this is essentially two doors in one, if we can see down here. Um, so this is <coughs> a plank door, which is tongue and groove going across the bottom, which is about an inch and three eighths thick. And then I, I rebated this out, um, backed off, and actually the door is gonna close and hit the frame here and this rabbit. It'll hit the frame, and then you, what? How they build it, and how I'm building it, is you build the uh, the additional door, the uh, the geometric door on top of that. So this thing weighs absolutely a ton. It's going to be around 80, 95 pounds when this door is done. But these doors were made in the period for security purposes. So you know, Indians and, and Native Americans um, and other people that wanted to get your stuff. Maybe they wanted your food, your 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 whatever they wanted. Um, so they were trying to break in. So these are really security-minded uh, doors, and we're going to use old strap hinges, um, probably three to hang these. And they have battens at three, por three portions down, here, here, and here. And the hinges are going to bolt into the battens in the back to, to accommodate all the weight on these doors. Uh, so anyway, so I, I'm starting out with, I got the basic door done, I have the basic frame, and I got my, uh, just did a square, and I'm just using a router here, no hand planing here. I mean, this is guttural type woodworking, uh, architectural, and, and a lot of people are trying to uh, squeeze money out of you sometimes. And, and you gotta make it economical. There's no reason to use a, a molding plane like this. So not that they are, but I mean, I'm cognizant of that all the time. So anyway, so this is a, a square rounded up, as you can see the, uh, the diamond in the middle. And we're gonna put that on its vertical, vertical edge. And uh, having a little problem here because, you know, these things work. I mean, these things don't come in totally dry. And uh, you can probably actually see the work of the board. Uh, how do I pull it down? Do I screw it? I don't have a clamp with a deep throat to pull it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet it halfway. I'm going to chisel out where the V tends to meet right there. I'm going to chisel that out. And this will sink down just a bit so it's relatively flush and stable as I start to build and radiate my, my uh, diagonal moldings around it. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. And even these guys, uh, they, they've been sitting here for some time and they dried out to a certain side and there's a little cup. So I've rehydrated these. Um, earlier this morning I, I slowly poured water on all these and I put uh, paper, paper towel saturated and that kept, kept the moisture in for a couple hours, turned the heat up in here, and they've really, uh, I can tell right down here, there was big gaps, they've really flattened out. There's still some small gaps, but, so very, very happy of flattening these out. And actually using the bench here as a flattening agent because the, this uh, Swedish bench is actually, I don't know, it's uh, three, uh, three inches in the in internal, so it's really keeping it flat. I'm clamped down here, so I'm flattening this guy out while I put the bottom batten down, the sides and the top. So uh, it's going to all aid in the bet that glue, that glue surface is going to peel this back and force it down to the bench top surface. So that's a, that's a good thing. And uh, so not too much else happening with these. This is number two. Uh, this still has to have its nails put in. You, we need to pre-drill these guys because if you don't, uh, you're going to blow the back out because this yellow pine, it's very durable stuff, but it's very brittle. And as the tip, that blunt tip of the nail comes out, I mean, if it was a pointed nail, it could be different, but it's blunt. And that last eighth inch or sixteenth of an inch, it's going to blow a piece of wood out. It could be an inch by an eighth inch or something, but it's still, it's unsightly, and then you've got to fill it in. And we don't want to do that. So 
there's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to come through and, uh, and pre-drill all these guys. So it's going to take some time, but I want to get through the woodworking first on all three of these, hang them in their subjective frames right here, and then go back and put the nails in. And then they go into some kind of a finishing process with a lot of filling. And I was asked earlier, what, you know, if you see some gaps in here, which there are some gaps, they were filled in the period, just like a boat builder would do with oakum. It's, uh, you know, reeds, and, and they would twine it as a, as a, tw uh, a twine or rope. They'd wrap it up, and they'd uh, submerge it in, uh, you know, a, a tarry mixture, and then they'd force it in all the gaps. And, uh, and that was kind of it. So that would kind of waterproof everything, particularly the large gaps. But also what we have here in the shop that came in uh, recently, we have a, a Swedish clock from Oslo. Um, painted case and some gilded accents and uh, these were original gilded accents but uh, looks like somebody else has come over and they've just you know used the term in the antique world as a radiator paint god knows why I've, I've never seen gold radiators I've still seen silver ones but um, it's a it's a gold paint and and it looks like a gold paint it doesn't look good so um, not that they wouldn't have used a gold paint but they would have used a higher content of gold over there in Sweden so there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. Um, plus, uh, I mean, really haven't looked at it. This is actually gessoed, so very interesting. So you didn't see the wood grain. So somebody went to a great lengths here, and that's the white coming through. And so they actually gessoed this, the same process of water gilding, um, and then they went over it. So this has obviously seen a lot of water, and it's gone down to the gesso surface, and the gesso has relieved itself from the substrate so that's going to require, you know, a little bit of restoration, conservation. Um, you know, kind of a, this is an original uh, cast hook to keep the door and painted black on the inside. And I'm, I'm not going to take the movement down. That'll be for a later time. But this movement doesn't look like it's been cleaned in a long time. We have missing glass here. It's broken, obviously. Um, the dial, I think the chaptering is right. It's going to need restoration. Um, but... The um, <clears throat> the back here, the pan, the dial, the main part of the dial has been really boogered up. It's bad paint. So that's going to come off. And these spandrels, I can't believe these spandrels are as bad as they are. Look like somebody gunked them up or just did bad casting. So uh, I'm going to have to determine, can all this or some of this be cleaned back? Or do we have to do a new casting and, and find a different spandrel? So, uh, and we have an alarm. So missing missing a, the uh, the minute hand, we have the hour hand here, which uh, we're going to have to fabricate one. But these little Roman numerals are an alarm. So uh, typically this is a 30 hour clock and, uh, you know, but the problem is with the alarm, if, you know, if you need to get up at six in the morning, you set it for six in the morning, you go to sleep and the clock is dead at that point. It will continuously ring until there's no more wind in the clock and then the clock is dead. Then you'd have to come out and wind the clock to keep the clock running. So if you forget and yet you're setting your clock, your, your time by a sundial back in the day, then what are you going to do? Then you've got a problem. It's a cloudy day. Then you're not going to regain the time. You're not going to know when the time is if you don't have a watch. So these things were uh, absolutely critical. So uh, interesting stuff. So uh, that's a project. Somebody's really bastardized. Look at this. I mean, they, it's like they took a grinder to this. It looks like they, they, they plugged it or uh, to fill it or to secure the molding back on. But Look at that code molding. Can you imagine the, the molding plane that went in there? The Kerr molding plane? I mean, we have one over here. I don't know if you can see it or not. They have a mess of tools here, but that's that's for the inside of a, a barrel um, and, and other applications of uh, round containers. That is something that could have been used in here, something similar, but not totally that. But you get kind of get the idea of it. I can't believe they, they just <laughs> went off and just gouged that out. So that's got to be worked on. But. But uh, and they call this a mora, M-O-R-A. So this is that means man in Swedish, I believe. So that's this is a mora clock, and then they have, and I don't know the name for the one for the the female version. So they have male female clocks. I don't think we have that here in the colonies, nor do we have it in England or or continental France. So, but uh, interesting stuff. So pushing on here, um, today get this. Uh, Get our diamond on and start to get our moldings. Our moldings are actually made. We have a pylon behind the door. And I think I have enough to do all two doors. Everything is made here. So, so Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist, uh, signing off.